<clears throat> What's up, everybody? Cameron with Race Pack, and I'm joined with uh, Anthony. I don't know if a lot of people uh, know Anthony. He's relatively new. We've been here, what, a couple years? Uh, about three years now. Three years, yeah. So not really that new for us, but uh, maybe for some of you guys uh, on, on camera wise and whatnot. But um, I guess we could start. Let's put this down a little bit. And Anthony, like, tell us a little about yourself. Like, I brought him in because we're talking about, today we're going to talk about um, all the IQ3, the differences in all the IQ3s, and the cool thing with Anthony is the fact that uh, he does, you know, a lot of like, he has a sweet Genesis coupe that he soups up and all this stuff. Hey, you got to talk about it. You, ha you have to. <laughs> no, no, I understand. It's no. part of the deal. So, uh, but basically, so I wanted to bring him in instead of it's just two drag racers in here, like me and Todd usually, and, you know, he's probably out signing autographs or something right now. So, yeah. yeah. Um, but anyway, along with him doing doing a lot of the stuff on his, on his personal time, he also took over for Donnie. Uh, a lot of people don't know that. Uh, Anthony is now the Pro Systems Coordinator here at Race Pack, and uh, Donnie has moved on to a new position here with uh, with the Holly Performance Group. Um, so he's he's kind of transitioning out of that, and uh, we we thought Anthony would be a great fit for that. So he's a great great employee and a great guy. And tell us a little more about yourself. Well, I'm having a lot of fun. Uh, you know, just playing with all the nitro and alcohol cars for for the time being. Uh, you know, I, I lived and died by the VNet stuff, uh, Sportsman, V300s, IQ3s, UDXs. You know, I played with them all. Uh, this is my baby. I absolutely love the IQ3S. It's such an awesome piece of equipment that we offer now. Uh, but this was such an amazing product to test and to really get out on the market because with this product, you could put this in virtually everything and anything that you possibly could dream of. So, um, and for the price point, I mean, it's unbeatable for the most part too. So, cool, so great cool. product. And uh, again, apologies, I have uh, an iPad here. Uh, we're doing this a little understaffed today, so we have had some sick, sick people today. But so that's what this is. So hopefully, I can see your comments on here and uh, be able to. If you guys have questions, ask away. Obviously, we're always an open book, even uh, if it's not re related to IQ three per se. We like to keep it on topic but if it's something that you absolutely have to ask by all means go for it so um <laughs> first one how much is race pack hoodie um race pack hoodies uh i think believe they're 36 dollars yeah, 38 36 um yeah bucks. something like that if you uh, log on to racepack.com uh cruise over to our uh, new web store that we have on there you can buy them straight online hats hoodies you know shirts we even have the new, uh, the new palm tree hoodies that yeah. we just brought back. So. New palm tree stuff. Everybody likes that. Cool. You just roll on to uh, racepack.com. It's got the store. Uh, click on the gear section, and there's all kinds of goodies for you. Get yourself an apron, too. So, oh, yeah, and an apron. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, well, uh, I guess we'll start. Let, let's you start. Let's you okay. start since we're, what do we have here? Uh, this is the IQ3S. Okay. Uh, so, Pretty much the instrumentation that can go in any car for the most part. Uh, this can be used just by itself, does not require using one of our data loggers with it. You can technically use a V300 or Sportsman with the unit so that you can record all the information this does as well as you know drive shaft information and all your other plethora of sensors you may have with the data system. Uh, so uh, this dash is really, really popular right now for us just because uh, a lot of guys building you know hot rods, street rods that they just want instrumentation without putting you know 15 gauges in their car. This takes you know all of that over and just in one nice central unit. Um, as well as the harness allows you to do pretty much everything as far as tax signal, speed, fuel level, turn signals, park and brake. Uh, even comes with a couple sensors as well to monitor engine vitals, oil pressure, water temp, oil temp. So uh, as far as an all-in-one package, this is it. I mean, you really can't beat it. It's so yeah. easy to hook up as well. The cool thing about the IQ3 Street, like uh, we came out with this dash because a lot of people obviously knew we had an IQ3 for drag racing and road racing stuff, and they wanted their street cars to look like their race cars. So we were able to take the same looks and cool things, implement road bearing functions, like you said, turn signals, you know, oil pressure, things like that, parking brake indicator, a lot of the stuff that you would need to, you know, basically pass your state's emissions. regulations, emissions, or whatever you want to call it. Um, but yes, they all look, the housings on all these, all the dashes we're going to talk about are essentially exactly the same, same width, height, etc. Uh, the IQ3, as far as width, I believe is 7.4 inches wide and four and a half inches tall. Um, and yeah, the only... Now that uh, we have the new IQ3S, we've, I guess we'll get, we'll show the backs of all these 
things later. Sorry we don't have multiple camera angles today, but we'll try to point out as much. On the IQ3S, obviously, um, you're going to have a different Deutsch connector in the back here because we're adding so many more inputs to the street one with the oil pressure, water temp, etc. You're going to have a, a multi pin deal. On the older ones or an IQ3 display dash, uh, this connector is going to actually be a little bit smaller. It's still a Deutsch style connector. Oh, there you go. Yep, so, it. but essentially, like you say, that's why we wanted to do this because all these things look almost exactly the same. So, a lot of people get really confused. So, but they all have a programming port. They all have some sort of Deutsch connector, and they all have a VNet CAN bus expansion port. So um, that's pretty much it when it comes to the IQ3 Street. It's super basic. It's uh, 995 bucks for the the display only version. And we uh, do offer the logger version as well, which is same exact components that come with this, but it has a little micro SD card at the top, so you can record your data download it to your computer and review the information later at that time. Yeah, so I mean, we we didn't bring out, and there's a bunch of dashes under here, so this is the only one we're talking about, but we didn't bring out an IQ3 Street Logger because they literally are identical. The only difference between that one is it has a, there's a little slot right here on all the IQ3s. If it's a if it's a data logger, it's uh, it has a little S, micro SD card that you can stick in there. If it's not, a data logger it's blocked off so that's a really easy indication on what you have mm -hmm. um, the other thing to think about um, is some of these actually have part numbers on the back so there's a lot of stickers um, that will like if you call us and you're like man I bought this thing I don't know what the heck it is you just uh, there's a bunch of labels on the back some people peel them off hopefully they didn't and uh, <laughs> It'll help us identify it a lot easier and a lot faster for you. Even without the sticker, there's a lot of different things. The label, obviously, in the front, that'll tell us what, what it is. The IQ3S, as well as the drag dash, they have their own unique label. So kind of easy way to tell what you have. And right. like Han was mentioning, the connector is a little bit different on them as well. So pretty easy to figure it out once you... Exactly. <laughs> so some of them are in kind of different boxes. I know this is kind of a, a weird topic but the iq3s obviously says iq3s on the box uh if it's the iq3 logger it will just literally have a sticker that says logger so they're pretty easily identified um so that, then, sticker. oh yeah so also you have uh the the labels here as well this one happens to say iq3s um, the next one we're going to talk about would be the IQ3D, which is the drag racing version. So I'll get rid of this one, and you can basically pull out that one. Cool. product here is going to be the IQ3D. Uh, these are for our drag racers out there uh, looking to put something that's an all-in-one unit so that there is no separate data logger and digital dash. Everything is just contained in this one single unit. Makes wiring a lot easier. As you see, all we got to worry about is just this guy here. We've got sensors that come with this kit. So you get an oil pressure sensor, a water temp sensor, even the drive shaft sensor as well. Uh, it does not come with the drive shaft split collar. Uh, make sure to order that separately. Uh, this can do either a two or eight magnet collar. Obviously, I would suggest to do eight magnet collar. Going to give you much better resolution on the drive shaft. So there is a there's a question here, uh, Anthony. How easy is this stuff to hook up? Uh, depending on which one it is, they're all super easy. Uh, there's a few different things depending on which version of the IQ3 that you have. But literally, it's if you have the IQ3 Street or the drag, it's going to come with a harness, and you literally run you plug the Deutsch connector in the back and run the wire to the appropriate input. For this particular case, you have the Deutsch connector, you're gonna have uh, an oil pressure sensor, water temp, like he was talking about, drive shaft. It's literally all pre-made. You don't even have to cut the harness and crimp pins. It's all pre-done for you. If it's too long, you can coil it up and zip tie it out of the way. If you wanna get super fancy, you can call us. We can sell you some extra pins and shorten them, but literally you don't even have to do that. Like you can. If you had like all the holes cut and everything, like in a dragster or something like that, you could probably have a drag dash installed like probably within an hour. Like yeah, it's yeah. really not that difficult. Um, we have on our YouTube page, we have a couple installs that we did on this particular dash. Um, as far as applications for the IQ3 drag dash, uh, there's a few limitations that you want to take a look at. Uh, we designed and manufactured this dash for the bracket racing world. 
Uh, so basically anything like stock, super stock, super comp, super, super gas, anything, super categories or bracket racing, this is probably your best bet. Um, we were able to kind of take some of the cost out of it and put it all into a one unit. You don't have to have an external external data logger like you used to have on the Sportsman. Basically what we did is we took an IQ3 dash and a Sportsman data logger and morphed them, in, morphed them into one. So the data logger is essentially this. So that's why there's a little micro SD card on the top here. Pop that out, off you go into your computer. So it, we were kind of simplifying everything for you. Like I said, the limitations on the IQ3 drag dash, something to keep in mind because I know a lot of top dragster and top sportsman guys, they run blown applications or anything with a magneto. If you have a blower and you or you have a magneto, like a MSD 44 amp mag or even a 12 amp mag, yeah. the IQ3 drag dash is a no-no. Uh, the reason being, why is that? Because see this harness, it's not shielded. So that means uh, those awesome MSD mags that are out there, they have a lot of output, so it can cause a lot of interference and things like that, and we just really don't want you to kind of go down that road. So uh, top drags or top sportsman is kind of iffy. If you're a naturally aspirated car or whatever, or even a nitrous car, you can kind of get away with this. But if you have a blown situation or a, a uh, Magneto car, you probably want to stay away from this, and then that's when you would upgrade to a V300 SD. But then you can also still run an IQ3 dash. It's just a little bit different. We'll get to that in a second. But and something to add to, just like Cam was saying, uh, this is basically a sportsman jammed into an IQ3. So you are limited to the amount of channels that a sportsman can do, which is six VNet channels. So aside from the internal engine, drive shaft, battery voltage, G meter channels, you're able to add six additional uh, inputs to this dash. So uh, if you're looking to outfit a car with a ton of sensors, transmission pressure, converter pressure, trans temp, you know, head temp, EGTs, all eight O2s, the V300 is really gonna be the best avenue for you because it does allow for enough channels to be recorded. Yeah, I, Todd mentioned something here on our live feed, something to definitely keep in mind when you're pulling the SD card out of, that, out of this dash, you wanna make sure, all of the IQ3s actually, you wanna make sure that the, the gold pins on the micro SD are card facing are facing up. up. Because if you flip it the other way and try to jam it in there, you'll end up breaking. There's a little cage in here, and you'll break it, and unfortunately, it'll have to come back to us. It sounds really dumb to, to say that. It only goes in one way, but you'd be amazed how many people, like when you're in heat of the battle going rounds, and you're like, oh, i got to upload this real quick. and Snap. you know. But the cool thing with having an SD card, if you're going rounds and for you know, you're getting round robin or whatever, and you can't get, can't get to your laptop in time, the SD card stores multiple runs. So you can put... 150 runs on this card before you even had to download anything so um, you're not going to lose your data or anything like that in the meantime type of thing so and yeah he talked about it too you, you know it comes with all the buttons the drive shaft sensor the bracket kind of all the all the stuff we try to make it as, as uh, easy as possible when it comes to putting it all together because you know we try to give you all the, the pieces of the pie because you know you don't want to get it and be like yeah i just got this for a gift or bought it or whatever Still and you're like x y and z it's right never fun never the only fun. thing we really don't supply that you would need is obviously a laptop and then maybe a mounting solution and but, a drive shaft collar yeah and a collar because of there's so many different sizes we used to include it in the kit but now we do not because a lot of our dealers are are stocking these dashes because they're so popular but if you get a guy that's got a you know four nine inch four nine inch or you know even strange mark williams all the four nine inches they're different they have different yoke sizes so that's why we we've taken the collar out we made the price cheaper and then basically you just buy the 44 dollar or 45 dollar collar for your appropriate size so um yeah so i guess we can go on to the next one here yeah, and the drag dash does use the same sensors that are used on our vnet system so they're the nice uh, industrial type sensors and not just the single wire sensors that come with a lot of our uh, street products like the UDX Street Raw Dash or even the IQ3S, so these sensors will definitely last. Right. Anthony uh, asked if the IQ3 comes with a boost gauge. Uh, no, it does not. That's not a factory item because some people don't have boost and some people do. It's something you can definitely just uh, purchase as an additional add-on. You can uh, purchase one of our VNet sensors and plugs into our VNet port. Whether regardless of which dash you have, it's just a matter of purchasing the additional additional sensor. You can place it on the dash, or if you have a data logger, you can data log that information as well. So, let's see what else we have here. Um, 
Next one looks like we got an IQ3 logger dash. This dash has been around. This is kind of like one of the first the first IQ3s we've actually came out with, which caused all these other dashes. But the IQ3 logger dash, obviously, they all look the same. But notice this box is a little different uh, because it's been around a little bit longer. We got a little more fancy as we went. But this IQ3 um, looks obviously the same. It has the little bit smaller Deutsch connector on the back because um, it's a little bit older and it doesn't come with as, as many things. This original dash was designed and manufactured for uh, like the road race circle track guy, like a time attack guy. Tractor, any, tractor pulling. Yeah, tractor pulling. Mm -hmm. Anything that uh, you're looking for an all-in-one compact deal that's a GPS based data logger. That's the cool thing about the IQ3 logger dash is this is a GPS based unit. So not only do you get an RPM input with it when you purchase it, voltage and then the ability to you know add up to 32 additional sensors such as boost oil water fuel etc EGTs. EGTs it's also a GPS based logger so when you hook the GPS antenna on the back you screw it in you're gonna get GPS speed you're gonna get uh, GPS G meter so uh, forward lateral and vertical G's uh, we can also lap times lap numbers which basically is all the track mapping functions of the data link to software that comes with all of this as well so uh, it allows you to you know do your segment times map the track etc so anything that you're looking to do that like the tractor pulling guys they they caught wind of this and they were super stoked on it because they can measure distance when it comes to because they're you know that pulling point of the game yeah. three 300 feet so you know that was really cool for them and it's a compact deal so they can kind of install it a lot easier but uh, this, if you're a road race circle track guy, this is probably, or even like autocross or something like that, and you're not needing the turn signals and all that stuff, um, this would be more of a unit for you. So basically, the only difference between this one and uh, the street stuff is it's GPS based. So um, if you're looking for track mapping and all that, your IQ3, uh, and I believe, what's the cost on this? Do you know? Uh, 15, 1550? 15, yeah, 1525, 1550 yeah. or so. So, um, pretty reasonable price for uh, something that packs a pretty cool punch and allows, like I said, you can add up to 32 additional sensors to it, so your boost or whatever it is, so it's, uh, it's a really cool deal, so, um, so let's see, uh, uh, Rafa, you were asking, uh, on the IQ3D, would you need a VNet extension cable to connect extra sensors? Yes, yes. Um, theoretically you do, because your dash is going to be in your cockpit, and I believe you have a dragster, so all your stuff is going to be in the engine compartment. So you'd run one cable back to like the engine compartment. Yeah, yeah it's six or eight foot cable or whatever, mm -hmm. and then you stack all your additional sensors into that. Put the cap on the end of it. It's super easy, and then you just program it in. So you don't have to run like nine different VNet yeah. extension cables to the back of our stuff. That's what's really cool about being a modular, VNet, yeah, yeah modular VNet, can based type of thing that we've developed and you know we didn't in invent can but we even built you know, invented invented our module. own yeah. yeah can so um but uh what else we got in here uh let's cover the display dash you know the, one of our most popular units because that goes with pretty much any data logger that we're using here so and if not that we can hook this up to an efi for instance and just stream the information over but uh kind of the the very first very first IQ3, just the display dash. Uh, this would be the unit that you use with, you know, your Sportsman data logger, your V300, your G2X, your G2X Pro, uh, whatever data logger you have. This will basically feed off the information that the data logger is seeing and display it on your dash. So any sensors, any VNet modules that you have connected to the system, you can program the dash to show that information live right in front of you. Before we came out with the IQ3 street dash, a lot of people, they wanted the looks of the IQ3, but we didn't have a street version. So that what they would do is they'd purchase this and then purchase each individual sensor for oil, water, fuel. Tax signal. They'd even purchase voltage. a USM yeah. and a universal sensor module to create turn signal indicators and all that. So that got really expensive for people at the beginning. So that's when we decided to come out with the IQ3 street stuff. So... Um, like you said, this will plug into pretty much any one of our data loggers. This is the beginning of all of the IQ3, you know, line, I guess you'd say. Now we've expanded so many times. Um, it used to just be this little guy, and then it went logger dash, and then, you know, 
all kinds of stuff from there. So, um, but it's uh, a lot of people used to use these as well for uh, when they're using EFI systems like a Holly or anything like that. Um, they will actually take the RV net T cable that comes with it, plug it in the back, and then you can add an EFI module to it and stream all that information because they just wanted you know a just little a display bit for exactly whatever ECU they have so. exactly very, very so. cool yeah one thing we actually didn't talk about let me grab one we have uh, I break my fingers the new the drag dash the wow that's on there yeah I gave up on that one yeah, I'm not <laughs> Here. Let me get a different one. Sorry. So, one thing I wanted to point out. Yes, they look exactly the same. But, the new IQ3 Street stuff, because it has the bigger Deutsch connector on the back, allows you EFI guys to make it a lot easier. Oh, yeah. uh, so, it has the built-in, basically, transmitter in the dash itself. So it's just a matter of, instead of buying a $375 module, because this one is just a dummy and it doesn't know anything, this one is actually smart enough to know that you purchase, you know, a, a $50 cable to basically that has your EFI connector on it into our connector. You plug it in and it already knows, hey, I have a Holly EFI and I just need to place the stuff on the dash so yeah, it's, it's basically the universal can module that we offer just in a iq3 unit so if you have a holly dominator for instance you just have to buy a little 75 dollar adapter plugs into the can high and can low and then you can program the dash for all of the information off the holly and uh, we have the list of all the supported efis on our website if you check out the iq3s so aside from holly we, what else do we have field tech mega squirt big stuff motec, motec. i think there's about 25 that yeah. we interface with currently right now um and then if you get really crazy, I think we have a generic can one if you know how to do all the protocols and all that stuff. Uh, Mark, you asked about warning lights and shift lights for all of these. Yes, every single one of them has the ability to do warning lights and shift lights. If you look across the top here, uh, you have warning uh, two warning lights on each side on the bottom, and then you also have progressive LED shift lights as well. Um, that's for all the lines of dashes. Um, you know, you can flash all the shift light all at once if you want. Uh, you can have it progressive to where it's, as it gets closer, it starts climbing. Uh, you have different colors here that I think it goes uh, yellow, yellow, green, green, and then red. red yeah. So, so uh, like Cam was saying, I mean, for a drag racer, for all the lights just to bark at you as soon as you get to your RPM, that's kind of the more initial thought on that. But as a road racer, you want to be able to kind of see the steps and where your RPM is coming up to. So you can actually program the intervals or program the steps as far as you want. So even if you want the first light to come on at 3000 RPM and finally get to your shift point at seven, eight grand, you can have it climb towards that. Or if you're a drag racer, you just want to hey, say, hey, 7400 RPM, I want all the lights to be on. Just tell me I got I to gotta shift. You can do that as well. So everything's programmable on it. And then, yeah, Cam was saying we have four warning lights as well. Uh, each of the four warning lights actually allow for two separate inputs. So as there's four lights here, but you could technically have eight warnings if you set it up that way. So you're not limited to just what you see as far as LED bulbs, but each warning is a capable of two separate inputs. So right. Right. Um, and then what I wanted to show you, Haltech. this is actually a dash that we manufacture for another company called Haltech, but we don't sell it here at Racepack, but Haltech sells a ton of these dashes, which it's a great unit. Their EFI system, they have a, uh, we have a private label uh, agreement with them to where we produce the dashes for them, but uh, they sell them. So if you have a Haltech EFI, you know, and you want to get a dash from them, it's going to look like this. Something to keep in mind when it comes to these Haltech dashes. They look exactly the same. Uh, the reason why I wanted to bring this up is because a lot of people buy race pack stuff on eBay or secondhand or something like that and they say, hey, I, I just bought, they call and say, hey, I just bought this IQ3 dash for, you know, a couple hundred bucks or whatever, and which is cool, but unfortunately it's not the right dash because we have so many of them, they're, it's not the right dash for their application. So if it says Haltech on it, it is made for Haltech. If it has an HT anywhere on the back, it's made for Haltech. If, uh, yeah, if, if it's, uh, if it seems, 
you know, like, you know, I guess what I'm trying to say is if you purchase a Haltech dash, it's really not what you're going to, like, if you have a Holly EFI and you buy a Haltech IQ3 dash, can you get it to work? Mm, yes and no, but you're going to have some cabling that's not correct and you have a, a the Haltech dash has a specific um, seven pin cable that comes out the back on the v-net as well that allows that allows a lot of the information to cross over to from the Haltech so that's how we try to differentiate those the connector is actually red usually on the back of the dash if you if you get that one as well so, so um, more of the story is if you're running a Haltech ECU you should get a Haltech IQ3 um, to add to what Cam's saying, we have private labeled the dashes for Haltech for a very long time. So we've actually offered uh, the IQ3 display dash in a Haltech version, which uh, a lot of the old, old, very first versions that came out will just say a race pack logo on it. So it, be can, it can be kind of confusing if you pick a use one up because it may say just race pack, but you're going to turn around to the back and see a seven pin connector to where the VNet is. That would be a Haltech dash. Uh, there's Quite a number of those out there since it was a really really popular item as well as the, the new iq3s haltech version is really popular for them right now as well if um, it has a red connector and you don't have a haltech yeah it's not the one you probably need. not the one you, you, you yeah. want yeah but uh yeah the haltech iq3s allows you to do not just the haltech ecu you can also do all the other ecus that we support um as well so the only main difference between our iq3s and the haltech iq3s would be that their uh the haltech iq3s can actually do the haltech ecu ours does not do the haltech ecu so that is the biggest differentiating factor between the two so like i said if you run a haltech ecu you want to run the haltech dash and if you run anything else then you kind of have the option of either or makes more sense to get ours because ours does come with a couple sensors as well comes with that oil pressure sensor and the two temp sensors so right you know just like mark mark collingwood said here the uh the part number for that cable we're talking about it's a dual can cable dual it's basically mod, yep. their can out on one side our can on the other blue on one side red on the other um that is the correct part number to in order to do that so um something to keep in mind uh we get a lot of drag racer guys that that buy those on eBay and they're just using a V300 in their super comp car and they don't have a Hall tech and unfortunately it can get a little sticky yeah. um, and w you know to make it work and it you but end up can. spending we can make it work yes you can make it work <laughs> but it's not recommended yeah so um, but uh, like I said other than that I mean we have you know those are kind of the the differences when it comes to IQ3 stuff um, I just put a IQ3 drag dash in my super comp dragster, uh, my personal car, and I love it. I used to have a V300 in it, and I decided to, since this is a popular item in the bracket racing world, I decided to put one in my own personal car, and I think it's awesome. Uh, I used to have a V300 in there. The only downside that I had going from the top fuel data logger, I guess, to something that was a little more uh, bracket racing oriented is the fact that I don't have a shock travel port or anything like that, but you can upgrade this in order to make a shock travel port and all the things that the IQ3 was lacking other than channel expandability. But I really like it. The blue light's cool. It matches my k and Pro Cube. It makes my dash look a little cooler. Uh, the accessibility on the micro SD card is a lot easier because I used to have my data logger underneath. I don't I have a one piece fiberglass body. so. I don't have a door on the side, so it kind of made it a little, little tricky to get the SD card out. So I'd have to reach under there, and you know, good thing I'm small. So, <laughs> but so now I don't have to worry about that. So it's you know, makes it a lot easier to to download and, and stuff like that. So. And if you do have an IQ3D and you do want to monitor shock travels, we do offer a shock travel module that allows you to take the shock travel or the linear information and record that on the data logger. Uh, that module allows you to do all four corners without sacrificing any of the VNet channels on the drag dash. So if you're a bracket racer and you wanted to monitor maybe just the right rear and the left front uh, uh, suspension at that point, which is very common, um, the drag dash can still do that. Uh, it will require buying a specific module that allows to do the high speed uh, rate because we do sample the shocks at 500 hertz. Uh, sampling shocks, anything less than that, is really not going to give you too much data. I mean, the shocks are something that you really, really have to keep a really close eye on or you're not going to understand what's happening at all. So 
500 hertz is what this will do with the module, but the V300 samples at 1,000 hertz, so double that rate, but 500 is more than sufficient information for, for this type of application. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, a, lot of, a lot of the bracket guys you just were talking about sample rates. I know we're kind of getting a little off topic, but with the drag dash, when you buy it, a lot of guys say, oh, I want the velocity of my shocks. Well, the velocity is something is a, kind of a math channel. It's a mathematical equation in order to do that. Uh, you would either have to have the standard software or you can purchase just that one channel from us for relatively cheap, um, which is you'd have to send us your config file. We can program it in, but yes, it's possible on the drag dash as well. So, um, but other than that, if uh, anybody has any questions here, let me see if I can roll through. We can take a look, but that's essentially a quick little run through tutorial on all of our IQ3 dashes. The, uh, they're all wonderful, great products in their own, for their own reasons. Um, but, uh, you know, if you see Anthony at the, at the, he's, Anthony's doing a lot of the NHRA national events this year. So between him and Todd and Donnie sometimes. Um, but uh, if you see him and you have any further questions or anything, by all means, track him down and kick him over on the scooter or whatever. Um, That's easy, trust me. Yeah, he, it's, it's, it's <laughs> happened before. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so he'd be happy to answer any of the questions or along with myself as well. Uh, we also have a lot more information on our Race Pack Media YouTube page. You're welcome to check that out as well or, you know, or give us a holler at our, at our sales and tech guys. We have uh, guys here Monday through Friday, 8 to 5, that are more than happy to give you guys a hand and get you set up with the right stuff the first time. We also have a lot of great dealers out there as well that are very educated on a lot of our products that uh, you know we encourage you guys to purchase through them too as well. So um, any way you get it, uh, we're more than happy to, to help you. So um, we appreciate your time. And <laughs> Mark, am I coming to Australia? Uh, I would love to go to Australia. So would my wife. Um, if you have an extra bedroom, let us know so we can <laughs> we can uh, save on hotels. No, but one one of these days, if I can ever find a top fuel car to drive down there, I'd love I'd love to do that too. But anyway, uh, maybe one day. So, uh, but yeah, uh, we appreciate your time, guys, and uh, we will see you at the track. Where are you going next? Uh, I will be in Chicago uh, two weeks from now. So nice. See you in Chicago. All right. Catch you later, guys. Bye.